Welcome back, Rust community, to another episode of Configures Corner, where I teach the basic and advanced levels of Rust electricity, where it's my sole intent to bring your skills to the next level. Today, I'll be doing just that by exposing you to a little bit of pulse control, at least demonstrating some things to you that I've found useful in my builds. Now, look at this button. It's terrible. Let's begin our demonstration talking about the button. All right, between the button and the pressure pad, these are your two most simple forms of just creating a pulse. Um, in my opinion, I'm not really fond of these because anybody can interact with these inputs. It doesn't matter if they have authorization on TC or not. Clearly, anybody can walk on a pressure pad. It's kind of meant for traps and stuff like that. So. If you're trying to create exclusivity with your inputs these are not very good and plus just look at the decompression time on that button it's just not very speedy like that's not very good now you obviously can do this but again it uh, also doesn't require any power for you to generate a pulse of electricity they uh, come default generating at least one unit of power without having to be plugged in when stood on or compressed so, you know, that's cool. Great inputs if you got somebody in a trap, you want them to pick their death, but other than that, like, they're, they're, they're not the best. So we got another solution here. Here you can see I have placed a switch and wired it directly, passing through a light to the toggle of a memory cell. And it's supposed to simulate the same effect as the button, but it allows us to toggle the memory cell faster, but at the cost of an extra stroke to toggle between on and off, or left output, right output, inverted output, or just output. And I don't really consider that a win because the philosophy with technology is it should make you lazier. This is making me do work, more work, and I don't like that. So we're off to our third solution. Here we have a blocker leading into a timer. When you activate the timer, it sends power to the branch. The branch sends power to the light and the rest of the circuit. Also directing a little bit of power to the blocker, blocking the timer so it immediately deactivates so you can activate it immediately as soon as you turn it on and this allows us to interact with our memory cell faster without the cost of an added stroke or interaction button button press so I think this is a win this is suitable for our needs and you might ask yourself well why would you use this why is this necessary and to explain that I had a trap base where a heartbeat sensor basically told the doors to close and when the killing mechanism killed who was ever in the trap base it opened the door again I wanted to be able to control the position of that door open it or close it no matter what state it was in with the ease of a flick of a switch and that's exactly what this allows you to accomplish so have fun making some really cool trap bases with that. Let's move on to some of the other little goodies that I have here for us. All right. As you can see here, we have an incrementer and decrementer, and it does exactly as specified. It increments up and it decrements down. Like so. So if you're asking yourself, well, that's nice and all, but how do I implement such wizardry here? Take it from me, it makes a smooth timing system to govern when your anti-raid defense system actuates. I built my system as turret pods concealing turrets behind garage doors around the outside of a trap base and because it was a trap base I wanted added flexibility to allow people to get trapped or pass by without prematurely revealing the secret anti-ray defense system. Hence the incrementing representing the amount of time climbing to the declared threshold that then actuates the anti-ray defense system. 
Just like every other timing mechanism, this needs to be reset. As a hard reset would do, the decrementation softly resets the timer, decrementing back down to zero rather than jumping straight back to zero. This was to prevent raiders who may have had the upper hand with prior knowledge or suspicions of an anti-raid defense system of some kind from outmaneuvering the system by delivering explosives within the detection radius and then retreating out of the detection radius assuming the timing mechanism would do a hard reset back down to zero when in reality it had only decremented a little bit. And when the raider would come back into the detection radius to deliver the next round of explosives, the counter would simply shift from decrementing back to incrementing to actuate the threshold, killing but more importantly outsmarting the raider because now you can taunt the now would-be raider with edgy insults and that's just wholesome fun. Awesome. Now we have the... The engine to this clock is this timer, which we have set at one second, and that one second gives us one second intervals. These one second intervals are produced by this loop. Whenever the timer becomes active, it allows power to pass through it to the branch. The branch splits that power out to the block pass through, and that block pass through disengages the power leading to the toggle on on the timer so whenever the timer deactivates this power that's pressing on the block pass through disengages and allows power to pass through the blocker once more pressing the toggle on on the timer starting it on all over again recreating the one second interval over and over and over and as this happens it presses the increment counter input every time it presses the increment counter input it increments by one unit all the way up to 60 to represent 60 seconds once the 60 seconds threshold is met, it outputs power to this branch, which resets this back down to zero and adds that one minute value in the representation of an uptick on this counter. And this process repeats. Once we get 60, what represents 60 minutes here, it resets and adds that one hour as a uptick to this counter here. And that is how our clock mechanism works. This example here demonstrates how we can slow a pulse or current of electricity in rust. Watch these two lights at the end. So the key on how this works is pretty obvious is this but it's the arrangement and how we wire up two electrical branches to each other and to a and switch what happens is when you apply power to an electrical branch it, it's kind of counter counterintuitive because what you think is since the branch outside has priority over the power supply it would therefore output power before the power outside but that's just not the case because when you turn this on and you have these two blockers uh, get powered simultaneously and try to block each other what happens is the power outside is actually able to pass power through the blocker first and block the other blocker before this output side can uh, pass power through and block this blocker therefore uh, the right side the power outside actually outputs power faster and first so now going over to here what's happening specifically here is the game is first checking this electrical branches power out when power is introduced to it and seeing that it's making contact to the input B on the end switch and then it passes the branched out power to the second electrical branch in this series. Uh, the power out 
is then checked by the game. It, the game says, okay, there's just nothing attached to this, so let's skip it and go ahead and move to the branch out and pass the power from it to the contact point or the input A on the ant switch, allowing the ant switch to pass the power to the next module within the chain of these delay modules all the way to the input, which is this light. And that's this example here going on to the next one. So what we have here is a simple circuit to turn a current of power into a pulse of electricity. It operates pretty much the same way as the two electrical branches in the AND switch with the little bit of delay between the electrical branches. Um, the only difference is these XOR switch here, which basically says, hey, we're getting a little bit of power here and we're going to pass power through. And then as that power comes down here and through the branch out, it contacts in point A and then it cuts off any power that can pass through any further. So this is how you're able to turn a current of power into a pulse. Fantastic. On to the next one. So to explain the circuit, I would like to revisit another circuit we already covered early in this video. This guy right here. Okay. You see how every time I pull this lever, it produces that pulse of electricity? Right? This circuit here accomplishes kind of the same thing. And I'll show you. Every time I flip the switch on and off, we get a pulse of electricity, all right? But why would we do this? The difference is, imagine that this switch actually represents a line of current that's coming from maybe some circuits of logic, right? And we need this current of electricity to generate a pulse for us whenever the current becomes hot. And whenever we take power away from this current, it generates another pulse for us. We cannot do that with the more manual style uh, option over there with the timer. Let me show you why. If we try to automate this process by hooking up a wire here, sure, we apply power here, we can get a pulse, right? But the, the thing that separates this from that is that when I take power away, it doesn't generate another pulse. Okay, that's the difference there. This is great for doing it more manual, but if you want more of an automated way of doing it, this guy is the way you're gonna wanna go. Over here we have an assortment of pulse generators starting with one of our most basic forms, the blocker and electrical branch. The electrical branch is effectively cutting off its own power supply, generating this pulse effect. Here we have a one second pulse generator and every time the timer is active we get an output for a second. Now we have the inverse of that. Every time that the timer is inactive we get a pulse of electricity. Okay, look at that. All right. Over here we have a more granular way of controlling our pulses of electricity by implementing a counter and setting it to whatever desired threshold we want. And we use a basic pulse generator to increment the counter up to that desired threshold and when it meets that desired threshold it passes power through to the branch. The branch then clears the counter and it starts that process all over again giving us a nice steady pulse at whatever value we want. Here we have what I think is a pretty clever implementation of the small rechargeable battery as a pulse generator. See, this battery is effectively dead and we are trickle charging it with one unit of electricity and after a couple of seconds it gets enough power for us to drain it with this electrical branch which we have set at 10 and to get a steady frequency of pulses, I do not recommend setting this anything below 10. Otherwise, it's going to be inconsistent frequency of pulses. It's going to be really fast, really slow, really fast, really slow. So keep it at 10 or above, and you should be good when it comes to having a steady pulse. 
I'd love to give credit to whoever made this. I heard it's corrector. I'm not very sure on that. Also, what this is potentially used for is what I've been told is dead man switches, but I don't have any personal experience with this particular circuit. But I thought it was cool to uh, at least mention it and show you that this is an option and I can't wait to see what you guys do with this. On to the next circuit. What we have here is a current limiting diode. So basically this is used to regulate the flow of electrical current through a circuit by limiting the maximum amount of current that can flow and any excess current that comes through here uh, comes through the secondary output. So here's our excess current and it flows out through the secondary output. Well, this wraps up our third episode of Configures Corner. The lesson today being pulse control. I hope you all learned something and I cannot wait to see you start implementing these lessons into your own builds and circuits. Please at and DM me and send me all your circuits and your gadgets and gizmos that you clever people make up. I am so excited to see your growth and progress within Rust Electricity, bringing the game and your skills to a whole new level. Join us at the Rusticity Workshop on Discord if you got any questions, if you need any help working on stuff, or just need some inspiration. Um, happy to have you and see some new faces. Please like, subscribe, and ring that bell to get more notifications so you can learn all the juicy, esoteric, rust electricity secrets from yours truly, Configure.